Hey folks, welcome to the second segment in this market correction for July 30th, 2007. What we're first going to do is go over a little bit of analysis on the markets and talk about what we talked about on Friday with the big drop the last couple days and discuss why we reached those calls, which we did to know that the market was going to fall, and also discuss how we, in the last video, if you guys all saw the video on the 27th, how we knew that the market would bounce today. So far, we have been dead on with, I would say, 90 to 95% of our calls having to do with not only the markets, but also gold, oil, the U.S. dollar, and the 10-year yield. And the, the calls have been within days of occurring. You know, we're not talking about someone calling for a market decline a year earlier or even six months earlier or three months earlier. We're literally talking about using the word correction in our daily market report on July 20th and the fall started the 25th. Uh, on the 26th and 27th, we got the big, big falls last week. Okay, folks. So what you're looking at here is the e, uh, the NASDAQ chart. And you can see here we have the moving averages in. We have the 20 moving average here and the 50. And we're well below all those moving averages. Now, you can see here the stochastics have taken a big tumble. And it looks like today we got that bounce, which is going to happen. When the stochastics get down to this low, you're going to at some point have a bounce, especially when they're this quick. Stochastics can stay on the, on the bottom or the top depending on for, for quite a while but it all that matters is how fast they got there and that's how you know you're gonna get a bounce now look at this look at this fall in the Nasdaq alright alright here we go here's the 20th alright this is the 20th this is when we use the word correction and this is where we are now now mind you in the moneystocks.com which includes myself and my partner and our other colleagues who run the company we are saying that don't be fooled here guys we did call for a market bounce today, and we were dead on in every aspect of that, and we do think the market has a chance to bounce again tomorrow, up a little bit, but we're not nearly close to a fall, all right? And we'll discuss what we think for the market tomorrow. It's a little up in the air. We did get the bounce today, and that's what we were calling for, and I would say we were 90% sure that that would happen, and we were dead on again. Tomorrow gets a little fishier, because you can see uh, another push down, or you can see a push up. But in any case, knowing the stochastics, stochastics can stay on the bottom or the top, but when they stay on the bottom, it's much more of a controlled decline where they stay on the bottom this way. Not when it's this steep, all right? This steep causes a bounce. So always remember that if you use stochastics and technical analysis. All right, folks. What I do see here is that we're below the 50. So even if we get a bounce up tomorrow, chances are we'll touch that 50, and that'll be resistance. Moving averages on the bottom or the top work as resistance or supports, okay? When it's above... This is a resistance because the market's below this line, but when the market's above here, this acts as support. All right, folks, so let's talk a little bit about this. Let's look at the intraday chart. Now, what did we call in the last video? All right, we called in the last video, which was on Friday. We said we think that the market will bounce. We were pretty sure on that, and we were dead on. And we said the market would either gap down at the open or open flat to slightly positive. We would see red during the day at some point, but we said we would end positive. If you want to go check the video, feel free to go back and watch the video again from the 27th. But that is what we said, and that's exactly what happened. We saw pre-market, the, the futures were down quite a bit. We saw the futures on the Dow down as much as 70 to 100 points. And by the open, the futures were basically flat. The NASDAQ opened up a couple points. We sold off into negative territory, being down as much as 12 points on the NASDAQ. And you can see that here in the chart. Sold all the way down here. We rallied back. We went down again, touched those lows, rallied back, went down, touched those lows. And then what we saw come lunchtime is a slow trend upwards. All right, folks, and that's what we saw. Slow trend up all afternoon and then a little dump at the close. All right, so this is probably a few scared hands worried about holding it overnight here. They made the bounce, which is exactly what we were looking for, and they dumped into the close, and here we sit the market right literally touched the 20 moving average right here. Okay. So again, that's exactly what we're talking about. You have to have a technical bounce whenever you dump that fast because everyone gets so scared, and that's when you're going to get the bounce because everyone needs to go back on board with the market going up. So that's why we, there is a slight chance we will bounce again tomorrow because we need to gather enough longs to go long this market again before the big boys or the, the, the institutions can push this market down again. Now, I'll tell you something, guys. While I'm calling for a possible another bounce tomorrow in the markets, just as I mentioned early on in the video, this is not healthy, all right? And I'm going to go to the daily chart here, and we will look at the ES right now, which is down to one and a quarter points. ES chart is a dramatic drop, all right? And we're missing candles here. I'm not sure why the charts haven't recognized it yet. But this is a dramatic drop. You're talking about from 1560 all the way down to 1479, almost 100 points 
in oh not long at all folks not long at all so anyways what we're saying here folks and this is key is that there are major issues in this economy out there and we are calling for a continued correction the correction could see anywhere between 10 and 20 percent in total correction in the market all right I'm personally leaning towards 15 to 20 percent drop here all right there is major issues and we, we again we pointed this out in the financials let's look at Goldman Sachs chart look at Goldman Sachs all right and let's go back to the market all right let's go back to the ES chart the S&P futures all right this is what you're seeing here you're seeing the market here touching new highs up here and this is on July 13th now let's look at Goldman on July 13th on July 13th right here Goldman's already here now look at Goldman here's here's July 13th when the market was at a new high and here's Goldman's new high all the way back here in on uh, May and June 1st all right May 1st and June uh, May, May 31st and June 1st so what I'm saying here folks is these were leading indicators and these gave us direct view into the future of the market and everyone else was saying no no the market's going to new highs uh, the media was pumping the market. No, the market's going to go to new highs. Every freaking analyst on all these stations, whether it's you know Bloomberg, CNBC, or whatever, or not there. Most of them were 99 percent of them were seemed to be bullish, and there were the occasional smart man who came in and said, smart man or woman, I should say, that came in and said, guys, we got to be careful here. But we directly saw this and knew the correlation between how strong it was on the up and how much the financials pushed the market up. And we're talking about Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Bear Stearns. And then we saw these roll off, but the market didn't roll off. And you had this negative divergence where these stocks were going this way and the market was going this way, and you know the market has to catch up because these are the leading indicators to the market. In addition, we saw negative technicals. Money flow was coming out of the market when the market was pushing up to new highs. All right, That means big institutions are unloading. And we saw multiple other technical analysis stuff that I don't necessarily want to talk about in this video, but they were all pointing to a drop, and they, should, they were all saying that this market should not be up in this direction, this high. So having said that, those, among a few of our other proprietary analysis stuff that we have come up with, gave us light to know that this correction was on the way. All right, folks. We showed you Goldman Sachs. Let's quickly look at Merrill Lynch's chart. All right. Look at this fall, guys. I mean, this is just not pretty. And uh, Bear Stearns. Right. So now let's talk a little bit about what we're looking for tomorrow and again in the markets. And we're going to go back to the uh, ES chart here. Actually, we'll, we'll look actually at the NASDAQ chart to get a better read on it. And here's the NASDAQ. And you can see we got the bounce today we were expecting. Now tomorrow, again, as I said, it's a little on the gray side. All right. And the reason on Friday I said this is what's going to happen Monday. And I was dead on and I knew what was going to happen. And we played it appropriately in the day trading chat room and on our swing trades. All right. However, now it's a little fishier. I do think we need to push up one more time just to get enough longs on the table, but it might be that we, got, we trade flat tomorrow to slightly down and then bounce up again um, on Wednesday. All right. I don't think they'll continue to punish this market until late this week or early next week. A major credit bubble that's occurred between housing and subprime and prime, and it's just not a pretty picture, folks. I mean, you have... All these companies over leveraged. You have hedge funds going belly up left and right now. And um, we, even though they've only told us about two Bear Stearns funds that went belly up, we personally believe there are a lot more out there that need to, that, that they just haven't told the market about. Okay? In, in addition, you have oil near all time highs. You have many, many other issues with the, that the market needs to deal with. All right? There's also an issue of the dollar, a very weak dollar right now. And the yen carry trade now with the yen coming down to, to only 118-ish per dollar. All right, that gets any lower and that's going to spook the market too. So again, uh, what I'd like to say before we close this out is that yes, we are looking for a 10 to 20 percent correction here in the markets, which is way more than people most people will say. Most people are saying 5 to 10. We're thinking it's going to be a little uglier than that. However, what we do want to say, folks, is when this correction is over, you will have the buying of a lifetime. All right, you will be able to pick up stocks and hold them for the next year and a half and make a lot of money, all right? We just have to wash this credit bubble out and then things need things will be great, all right? That, all right? It's already over yet. Yes, I do think we will bounce higher before we go lower, but it's not over and we are going to go touch at least February lows if not more, folks, all right? Have a wonderful evening. We'll update you guys again tomorrow. I love the fact that so many of you guys are watching these videos. Stay up with it. I strongly advise taking a shot on the swing trade alerts we put out and the day trading chat room if you're a day trader. All are great. We continually make money. And there are many other services that InTheMoneyStocks.com offers that can 
be uh, very advantageous to you all. Have a wonderful evening. Email me at gareth at inthemoneystocks.com. That's G-A-R-E-T-H at inthemoneystocks.com. If you have any questions, I look forward and will answer all of them. Take